I walked into the room. It was an old room, timber floorboards, the beautiful smell of Jarrah, slightly dented in where people have been walking over it for years. There were sash windows, sunlight coming through in dust motes. There was a clawfoot bath. There was a full poster bed. There was animal skins on the floor and beautiful cushions on the bed and lots of things draping everywhere. There was a velvet couch. There was a dressing table with lights all around. And there was a little forest of plants on the floor with leather cushions. I could feel everything through my skin. It was the eve of my 50th birthday. And up until that point, my skin had witnessed my entire life. And I wanted it to witness this. But to tell that story, I have to tell another story. 18 months before, and it takes place in a different room. It takes place in the room of my family home. Same sash windows, same Jarrah floorboards. But where there was warmth in that first room, there's no warmth in this room. It echoed. My feet were cold. I stood in the heart of the house, in my kitchen where I'd raised my children and baked bread, cheesy might scrolls, and there was no one there. I found after 29 years of marriage that my husband was with someone else. And that particular afternoon, my skin was not the same skin as it was 18 months later. My skin on that day when he left and I knew that he wasn't going to come back was like a carapace. It was like an exoskeleton. And I could feel myself like a lobster, cooked, red and cracking. I wondered what that flesh was like inside. I wondered... Do lobsters even bleed? Standing in that kitchen, the, feet come, my, the cold coming up through my feet on the floorboards, my elbows on the counter and my head in my hands, I felt like a completely different person. I wanted to reach to my right where there was a Stanley knife. It was almost within reach. If I just moved one foot to the right, I could have grabbed it. And I almost did. I wanted in that moment to feel what it was like to cut myself open. I wanted to see if I had blood, like the lobster, and if it would pull I never, ever in my life thought that I would understand what it was like to want to do that, to commit that act of terrorism on my skin. My skin that had seen my life, that had witnessed all the joys and all the pains. But in that moment, I knew exactly what it was like. But I didn't do it. Instead, I picked up a pen. And I wrote down everything I could think about myself in that moment. Knowing I was alone in that house, knowing I felt alone in my life, I wrote down every adjective possible. And those adjectives were, you are disgusting, you are ugly, you are fat, you are revolting, why would anyone want to be with you. And then I went to bed, but I left those words there because I wanted them to be there when I woke up in the morning so I could remind myself who I was.
The next day, I left the house and I moved in with my family. And my brother and his wife nurtured me back to health and I started doing things I never thought possible. I started going out. I started doing burlesque. I started thinking about jumping out of an aeroplane and then doing it. And I started barefaced stories. My skin felt like it was changing. I felt like I had got to that space in my life where the exoskeleton could be cracked open and that flesh underneath was not going to be so vulnerable. Which brings me to the eve of my 50th birthday. I step into that room and I feel things differently. Everything around me has a different sensory perception. I feel warm. I feel joy. I feel free. And that particular day, that particular room, I realised that lobsters do bleed, but they bleed blue blood. I entered that studio, it's a photographic studio, and I took off all my clothes. And I had a thousand pictures taken of myself that day with absolutely nothing on except me and my skin. The skin that I had witnessed my entire life. The, the skin that had witnessed everything that I'd been through. And I loved every second of it. The dust motes came through. I felt that on my skin. I felt the warmth of the animal uh, skins and I felt the velvet of that couch. And I reveled. I reveled in every single aspect of that experience. I drank champagne. I lay in the clawfoot bath. I lay on the bed. I did the mermaid pose. I did the sexy headache. <laughs> and it was the best experience of my life. Now, when I wake up in the morning at my new flat overlooking the river with my two beautiful cats, <laughs> I wake up to a massive A1 framed picture of myself in front of the bed. <laughs> and I walk up to it every morning. <laughs> And I say, Sovereign, <laughs> what are we going to get up to today? Nora Ephron said, above all else, be the heroine of your own life, not the victim. Thank you. <laughs>